big changes are coming this summer in and around St James's Park. So let's get further down there, have a look and explain exactly what is going on ahead of the new season. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Back by Channel TV and here we are, first stop on today's whistle stop tour of St James's Park updates and I have a nice little exclusive for you lot for the opening date of the stack behind me. Obviously right now there is loads of work going on, finally the builders have some decent weather, some Geordie sunshine, the summer might actually be starting now in the middle of June, finally. It stopped raining for now, anyways. And the sun is shining, which means the grafters can get grafting. And they are, to be fair. It's going up nicely, it's going up quite quickly now. And there is a big emphasis on getting this ready in the next four weeks. There's exclusive fear. A lot of people are saying, oh, hopefully it's open by the start of the season. Hopefully it's open for that first game of the season, 17th of August against Southampton. Maybe even the week before that. I can tell you now, they want this place open in the next three to four weeks. However, that is a bit of a bold aim is what some people are telling me some of them yeah are saying uh, that's that's the goal they've been told to really go for it and get it up in the next month but that does come with some difficulties that does come weather aligned remember i was here back in for what march april and i was told then that they were get, trying to get it open which they were in time for the england games here at st james park so they initially wanted this open for the third of june for that england v bosnia game on the monday night and then they could have had it open all summer for the euros get people here drinks food everything made shitloads of money back on the on the building costs to watch England in the in the Euro 2024, but the, obviously that's not happening. However, I tell you what, if they're quick enough, mm, three weeks till the final, probably not. But that could be the best case solution, but it won't be. Like I said, they're, they're seeing here behind me, realistically, they're looking at the middle to the end of July. End of July, it should definitely be open in time for August, definitely. But hopefully, another four weeks. So middle of July, could be possible for the stack opening day. It's nice little exclusive fee there as the builders get working behind me to elect the new castinated fan zone park. Obviously the, the cellar fan zone here at the stack where all the match day business will be happening, but it is gonna be open seven days a week for families, all ages can come here. Loads of food stands, there's 20, 20 different outlets inside there. Food, drink, a couple of other different businesses, couple of ventures, loads of stuff going to be inside there. The bars are getting popped up now inside there behind me. The bathroom, the tiles are all getting done. We obviously seen the stack back in the day. It was on Pilgrim Street, I think it was, in town on the corner. That was hugely popular nightlife, hugely popular just during the day. If you're shopping, your missus is doing your head in, you can go in there for a paint, go in there and get some scran. There were some loads of, loads of great scran outlets in there. It's going to be the same in here. And obviously this is going to be one place to be on a match day in the tomb because of obvious reasons, the ideal location. You are literally a stone's throw away from St. James Park. You can walk across the road and you're in your seat in the Gallagher end. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're close enough to walk around the corner. Whereas obviously normally people would be coming from miles away from different streets, different areas in Newcastle, walking up, rushing in with the e-tickets, nobody's scanning queues to get in the turnstiles. Makes life a lot easier now. And obviously don't take away from other businesses. There's, you know, I want to see the strawberry do well, I want to see every pub and business do well in Newcastle. But this is going to be an ideal spot. It's a great addition to the city centre. It's going to create loads of jobs and it's going to be Buzzing. The atmosphere here should be class, and I've had lots of messages asking me, will they be able to show the games? So far, from my understanding, they can obviously show the televised games, so they will have the rights to show the broadcasters, such as Sky Sports, TNT. So it's a shame that we haven't got those Champions League nights or any European nights, to be fair, because we could have been in there watching us, massive screen, huge projectors, playing against Milan. If you had, couldn't have got a ticket, for example, if it was this time last year, you could have came to Newcastle, been outside the stadium. Um, but home games... They do show the home matches at Shearer's Bar because they can use the feed from the turnstiles from the stadium into the bar. That's why it's always absolutely rammed. Not sure if they'll be able to do that here. That's the issue. I'm not sure if they will be able to show the games here because unless they're going to be able to get the wire underneath the stadium, underneath the metro and everything, then it's going to be a tough one. But realistically, what they're hoping for is obviously fans can go here before the game, after the game, and then you can even just watch you know, sort of Saturday in there, watch the scores go in. Listen to the atmosphere, listen to you hear the goal going before it pops up on Sky Sports or whatever you're watching in there. Before you get the score updates on your phone, you'll know first by the roar of the Gallagher or the, uh, the cries of the Gallagher. Hopefully not, should be a good season next year. So aye, loads going on here, loads going on here behind me at the stack and the opening date is hoping for the middle to the end of July. Here we are people, second stop 
on the two hour round St. James Park. We are on a bit of an angle because the road's a slope, so I'm not like leaning that way. We are here outside the temporary club store that was obviously rammed to death all the way down there. Queues all the way to bloody Tynemouth a couple of weeks ago for the kit launch. And as you can see, I've trapped myself. Here we go, I've trapped myself. Couldn't help myself. Honestly, it's lucky that I only spent the 85 Great British Pounds on this jacket and not about 500 quid in there because I could have, I nearly got the white one, I nearly got everything. But I've restrained myself because I'm looking forward to the other Rangers that will be coming out very soon for Newcastle. August, December time, August, December? August, September, they're going to be dropping other leisure wear and then later on in the year they're going to be dropping retro kits. You would have seen the one that Cass is wearing in the promo shoot. They're going to be dropping all sorts of different designs, kits, retro Rangers, leisure wear in the autumn winter months so I don't want to spend too much just now because I'm going to be spending loads then as well but for now I've went for this rain jacket this should keep me nice and dry on the air match days coming up this season I like it the old maroon touch which we all know is going to be a nod towards the iconic 95-96 kit for the away design this year as well so I nearly went with the white one I thought you know the white one's going to get dirty it's going to be hard to keep clean it's going to be a nightmare so I went for this one I like the little maroon number it's different 85 quid not at all cheap but it's, it's tidy, I like it, it's a smart design. And like I say, I, I can't walk around with Castor anymore. I had the long blue Castor one on, I had the short black and white Castor one, nah, Castor out. I had enough of it, get the three stripes in. Get a, get a Wonga, get a bank loan. You're gonna need it. But the temporary club shop has obviously popped up here, some great staff in there, they've got plenty of sizes in there at the minute. They're restocking them as we speak. They've got loads coming in, and they're doing a, they're doing a smashing job, listen, in that pop-up shop behind us, because obviously, where we're gonna go in a minute, is the new club shop at the stadium that is getting done up as we speak but the club shop is expected to be here for another couple of months while they do extend and improve and renovate the stadium store so for now that pop -up shop is as it is and you will see it absolutely chucker yet again in a few weeks time for the launch of that away kit that is expected to come in the first couple of weeks of july the maroon and blue away kit based on the 95 96 edition so let's walk across the road now and see how the new store is getting on and the final stop of our St. James's tour brings us to the brand new club shop that is getting done up ahead of the new season. Now then, when will it be ready? I can hear you all asking in the comments, what's it going to look like? What can we expect? Well, you can see behind me, they're obviously working hard. Now they're grafting away as well. The rain's probably going to come, so the fans are going to get delayed again. But I took my jacket off. It's still a bit warm, still a bit toasty. Hopefully the sun comes back out. And hopefully that gets up ASAP. However, I'm hearing that it could be September, the opening date of that brand new refurbished Adidas mega store at St. James Park. So September's a bit of a bit of a mission, like, isn't it? September's a bit of a wait. Obviously, we're only in the middle of June now. I was hoping and thinking that this could be ready for the start of the season. Hopefully. I mean, these will try and put a rush on this, and you never know how things could develop and change and progress, because realistically, Adidas... And the club will want this store open in time for that start of the season. At least in time for the 17th of August at home to Southampton, our opening day of the Premier League campaign. But before that would have been ideal. Before that would have been much better because we've got the Seller Cup coming back here at St. James Park this summer. That's yet to be officially announced, but I'm hearing that will be on the weekend of the 10th of August, a week before the season starts. We will be welcoming a couple of different teams from across Europe here. Obviously, last year we had, what, who was it, Villarreal, Fiorentina, I think it was. So you'll have other teams from across Italy, Spain and whatnot, Germany maybe, playing here at St. James Park. It's a great weekend. They normally get the women's involved as well, so you normally get four games there to enjoy two on the Saturday, two on the Sunday, and we've got a seller cup to defend. Yeah, I want to retain that trophy. People are telling me, oh, we haven't had a trophy in 70 years. <laughs> Did you not see Jacob Murphy lift the seller cup last year? Huh? Big trophy that was, big achievement. So we will see the seller cup here again in pre season, and that would have been the perfect time to be selling all three kits because all three kits will be out by then. The maroon and blue away kit will be out middle of July, and then the white third and green kit, which is again. A nod to the early 2000s design with the brown ale, green under the sleeves and stuff. It's not Saudi themed, it's just we had it before and they've revamped it and it will have what looks like that logo, the Magpie Channel logo on the kit as well. The old NUFC logo from the 80s will be on that and perhaps a tree foil Adidas retro logo as well. That'll be available the start of August. So they'd want the kit shop done out nicely with all the new designs on display, home away in third for that cup for the start of the season but it's not looking that way apparently they're aiming for a september opening date for this new club shop so what can you expect 
Well, you can expect a huge, fancy, modern store, to be honest with you, with loads on offer. Now, for personally, I didn't think that the Castor shop looked that bad. They did a little revamp, they put some neon signs up and stuff last year. It looked all right. But obviously, we're missing out. We're nowhere near as big as we could be. We're nowhere near as selling as much as merchandise as you could. So Adidas are going to capitalise on that, and rightfully so. Why would you not? And the fans want that as well. They can give the fans a lot more because, take this into account, right? I went to Old Trafford, what was it, the second, third, last game of the season there during the week and went past that mega store and had a look in as well before the game. And they have airport-style scanners on the entrance. That is crazy because they sell that much in there and some of it is worth a fortune. Well, at least a few hundred quid, you know? So they've got all the security on there. And even if it wasn't, even if you're nicking £110 tops, if a few people are doing that, you're losing thousands and thousands every every month, really. The security guard I was talking to in the pop-up shop there was saying he's had no bother today, but you know there has been last year, I would say this shop, because store weren't even putting tags on the shirts, so people were just running out with tens of shirts and selling them on. And there wasn't anyone there, any security, anyone doing anything about it. Adidas have put a stop to that, and they put a stop to that happening at Old Trafford. So you've got airport sales scanners when you go in, you've got loads of security in and around there. In the shop, they sell loads of random stuff. Even in the Newcastle pop-up shop now, we've got teddy bears. Never seen them before, have you? Newcastle themed teddy bears. And then the usual stuff, your scarves, your jackets, your kits. At Man United, at Old Trafford's mega store, which is obviously owned and run by Adidas as well, so expect something very similar, there is golf bags. Manchester United golf bags. So I'm a golfer. Newcastle United golf bags could be on sale here from September. So that's the kind of stuff they've got on offer. In that one in, in Old Trafford, they had water bottles with the Man U bar, John. Slippers with the Man U bar, John. Alarm clocks, watches. Man United watches. Do you know what I mean? So there's all these things you're missing out on. I remember we went to Spurs Stadium, the new one, and their store was unreal, and they had everything you could ever think of with the Spurs badge on it. You name it, they had it with the Spurs badge on it. So that's what Newcastle are trying to do. They've got the revenue in-house now, which they didn't have with Castori, so on the merchandise side of things, obviously we make a nice profit off that. So there's loads of stuff that we could sell, that we could increase sales with in this new club store. Now, I do know, if you remember, if you've been in this shop, which I'm sure many of you have, there used to be escalators on that side. On that side, there used to be escalators coming down there. I'm hearing that they're going to take out them escalators and put them at the back of the other side, where the stairs used to be. So they are revamping things. They're not going to take months here just to whack up a few Adidas signs and, and make it look pretty. They are going to totally change the design. Remember, I was in here a couple months ago when the Adidas designers were in there themselves. So I had a chat with them, and you know they're going to really change things around there, revolutionise it a bit, give it a revamp, give it a modernisation. And it's going to look class. And they're going to have loads on offer and loads on sale. Now, I am hearing some people say that there's going to be a cafe in there. I don't think there will be. From my understanding, there won't be a cafe in there. There wasn't a cafe in the Old Trafford one, and that was absolutely massive. I don't think there'll be a cafe in here, to be honest with you. There's a cafe right there, Shiraz Bar. If you want a cup of coffee, you can can downstairs next door to Shiraz Bar. So I think it'll be quite pointless, to be honest, using some space up for a cafe. And how busy is that really going to be every other day apart from match day? Not very, because look at Shiraz right now. I'll look at it and tell you. Dead. Uh, so, you know what would be the point of having a cafe up there waste of staff waste of resources may as well stock it with golf clubs <laughs> that's what they're going to do Adidas is going to have loads going on and in that Old Trafford one that's a massive wasp there's screens and everything everywhere so they had Sky Sports on on the screens and everything really impressive so Adidas will look to replicate that as well here at St. James Park for the opening date in September a couple of other changes in that I wanted to talk about before we sign out of this video and that is behind us inside the ground they are currently really in the brand new turf for the upcoming season, which is great to see. Obviously, towards the end of the season, the pitch is starting to get battered, especially with the amount of games we had, the Champions League and whatnot. The grass is getting dry, losing its colour, has losing its touch. You now you want that nice silky carpet ready for the start of the season. They're working hard there, indoors, in the ground, to get that pitch laid for the new campaign. Because obviously, at the end of the season as well, you have media playing there, you have charity stuff going on, staff play each other, whatever. So the pitch is battered. The pitch is absolutely bad now, so a fresh one is getting laid. And what else is changing is the signs. So if you remember, above the Gallagher stand, we had two Castor badges and a couple of other, obviously, banners in and around the stadium with the Castor signs on there, with the lettering. That will now obviously change to this badge. The lovely three stripes emblem will be displayed above the Gallagher, maybe other places, brand new big Adidas signs on the stands, in the stands, in the concourses, 
you'll see that change as well when we come back to St James Park here on the 17th of August for the Southampton game and maybe earlier for the Seller Cup or the pre-season fixture. So those are the changes that are happening and obviously other stuff more online and more things I've mentioned if you're lucky enough to get a ticket for that Southampton game one way you can enter if you're not a season ticket holder is through the ballots and Newcastle United released the new Mags membership programme recently in the last week or so where there's obviously three tiers £47 for the Mags Plus that gets you loads of discounts including on retail stuff so it won't be kits but it'll be the other retail side of things early access to new releases of clothes and whatnot as well and, and merchandise and then obviously discount at Shiraz, discount on other stuff. And also, most interestingly, what I found was never before seen money can't buy events with ex-players and people from the club. So that should be interesting. If you're a membership, whether that be online or a couple in person, that's something to look forward to and something to think what the club have got planned there. Some exciting stuff as well going ahead. And a great thing for me from this, from the Mags membership, is you get to watch full replays of the games. How good is that? If you're not happy with match of the day only showing two and a half minutes of our 5-0 win, you can watch the full match back on... Uh, nice doggy there, isn't it? Lovely. Nice uh, replays of the full 90 minutes, which is a huge bonus for me. I think that's class. You can really go into depth and analyse the game and, and enjoy the full highlights there, so that's class. And the other thing I wanted to mention was two pre-season games are going to be shown to members as well. So the Japan ones and things like that will be shown on your membership and the one below that is £37 where you just get a couple of those things not included but you still get access to the ballots to try and get yourself a match day ticket so stay tuned for that hello mate Harry. so you can get all those access all the benefits are listed online on the website so have a look at them let us know what you think of the new mags membership scheme right and i think that's done enough that's enough we've covered yet in and around st james park to summarize the stack seller fan zone is hoping to be open in around four weeks time that's at best, to be fair. So we're probably really looking at the end of July, start of August. Definitely, easily, easily said, in time for the start of the new season. The temporary club shop is going to be up there for a couple of months while this new one behind me is built. We're looking at around September time for the new St. James's Park store. And then, like I said, the pitch is getting made. The cellar cup should be coming back pre-season, 10th of August. I think that's about it. We've covered a lot in this video, so please do subscribe. Drop a like, drop your thoughts in the comments. And enjoy yourself.